Hey, welcome back. Welcome to Church in the Mall. Welcome home. We are continuing our study of Acts chapter 8, and we are now at the part where Philip runs into an Ethiopian eunuch. A very unique story, but let's dive into it. Now, an angel of the Lord said to Philip, go south on the road, the desert road that goes from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he's headed out of the city over towards where the water is to the city of Gaza, right above Egypt. So he started out and on his way, he met an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of the treasury of Candace, queen of Ethiopia. Now, Candace is not really a name, it's a title. It means queen mother or, or queen. And so this man is in charge of the queen's treasury. He's a big deal. He's on his way home and he's sitting in his chariot reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. The spirit told Philip, that means the spirit of God spoke to Philip, go to the chariot and just stay near it. Philip ran up to the chariot and he heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. He began asking him, do you understand what you're reading? Philip said. How can I, said the eunuch, unless someone explains it to me. So he invites Philip to come and be a part of this time with him. Now, there are people all over with questions about God. And they're looking for people just like you and me to step into these awesome moments where we hear the Holy Spirit saying, hey, just stay close. Just listen. And as he's listening, he has an opportunity to respond with the hope that is in him. Listen to what happens next. The eunuch was reading a passage of scripture from Isaiah, or better yet, Isaiah 53, 7 and 8. You can find that in your own Bible. Let me read the words to you. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before the shear is silent. So he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. This man is wrestling with this idea of Christ being the ultimate sacrifice, that he came and emptied himself, that he gave up such great power and prestige in order to humiliate himself and die a death on this earth so that you and I can stand in the radiance of God knowing that we've been forgiven of our sins. There's only one way somebody could do that. They had to, one, be God. Two, they had to be flesh, human, which Jesus took on flesh. They had to come to earth and live a life just like all of us humans, being born into the, this earth, growing into this earth. And then they would have to live a life in perfect obedience to God, never sinning, not once. I don't know any humans like that, but I know of a person named Jesus who can fulfill all these things. He then would have to give his own life as a sacrifice, a humiliation, an injustice, like Isaiah says. And in doing so, he would become the ultimate atoning sacrifice. So that when God looks at you and I, when we go to stand in his presence, we don't stand under our own merit in which we'd be obliterated. We stand with the presence of Christ inside of us, the Holy Spirit taking up residence inside of us, God's presence inside of us, so you and I can be holy and set apart. Well, what happens next is so awesome. This eunuch comes to understand who Jesus is. Philip explains it to him. And when they come across a body of water, the eunuch says, please, please, I want to be baptized. And the moment Philip baptizes him, he's taken away in the spirit. And it, you would think the story ends there, but it doesn't. You see, the eunuch is going to go all the way home, back to Candace, the queen of Ethiopia. Now, what you don't realize is that there have been two queens prior to her that were great warrior queens. They spent a lot of time building up their territory, their land, and their finances. This particular queen who's in rule right now in this passage has reaping the wealth of a great nation and lots of money. Now, what's going to happen next is the next queen that comes on the throne after her will lead the entire nation, the Ethiopian tribes, to faith in Jesus Christ and make that their supreme religion. Isn't that amazing to think about how God works in such small ways to accomplish such big goals? Now, I don't know what God's got planned for your life right now, but I guarantee you there are small things awaiting you that are going to turn into big things. The question is, are you willing to listen to the Spirit? I want you to pray this prayer this week. Lord, teach me. Show me. Where do I need to be? Who do I need to talk to? Give me an opening to share the good news in my life. The simple hope that you are my God and I am your people. I dare you to pray that prayer this week. And then listen and step into what God will have you do next. I look forward to seeing you on Wednesday. I can't wait to show you who Saul is.